wie haben wir das Herz haben soll man ziehen lassen? Wenn wir wärmer geboren als solche Fälle, muss einer dem anderen geht über. Und nicht nur alle muss geht man über. Nur eine Sache muss, stellt man allein aus. Falsche Sachen. Man stellt allein auf, als solche Sachen. Muss nicht, muss nicht ausgehalten, auch bei Gott. Muss nicht ausgehalten, auch bei Teure. Wenn man hört, anything, was man hört, du hast bei Nacht, in Englisch, du hast Wort, think out of the box. Mr. Serio and Judge Kamitz, what are the most important things one needs to know before being involved in a foreclosure or entering into a short sale? Uh, I spoke to a prosecutor the other day who's in the Economic Crimes Bureau of the Kings County DA's office, and he told me that 25% of fraudulent sales are sales from straw sellers, people who do not really own the property. Most people who buy a home don't buy the house with the idea, oh, I'll go into foreclosure. We buy a home to give a good place to live for our families. So your credit is one of the most important things that you have in the ability to buy a home. So it's very, very important that you make your mortgage payments on time when you make them. Of course, if you make your mortgage payments, we don't have to worry about foreclosure. But now month number one comes and you can't make that payment. Even if you have to struggle and you have that problem, if you make the mortgage payment within the 30 days of the month, you know, it's due on the first of the month, as long as you make that mortgage payment within the month, your credit is not affected. The third month is the crucial month. By the time you reach month number three where you haven't made that payment, you are now in default of the mortgage. Now listen, if you can't imagine something that you did that week that Hashem wants to give you a reward, don't talk to those people because they're not there to help you, they're there to help themselves. Go to an attorney. And I recommend to people when they find themselves really having this difficult time to take whatever money they can and put it on the side. The bank won't be accepting your payments after three months unless you have all of the money to give them. And the FBI came to see him and he said, Mr. Brogan, when you were an agent with the union, did you take any bribes? What would you say? What would you say? That's the worst answer you could have given. I told you not to say anything, didn't I? And I'm not kidding. No, because Mr. Brogan took bribes. If he said yes, they couldn't do anything because it was five, seven years ago beyond the stature of limitations. If he said nothing, They couldn't do anything because he didn't say anything. But by saying no, he lied, created a new crime, violation of 1001 Title 18, and was indicted, convicted, taken up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said there is no exculpatory no, which means you just can't say to cover yourself that you're innocently not involved. So say nothing. When the word is in your mouth, you're the master. When the word is out of your mouth, you're the slave. The government has to prove you're guilty on a reasonable doubt. Don't help them by speaking to them and giving them, filling in gaps in their case. The, my client said to me, I'm accused of something very serious. The officer wants to talk to me down at the station. I says, give me his number and his name. He says, no, I don't want to upset him. I says, give me his name and number. He gave me his name and number. I called the officer. I says, I can't have you talk to my client. So the officer tried to be a tough guy with me. And he said, look, we can come and arrest him. I said, if you've got to arrest him, arrest him. But you're not talking to him. You're not saying a word. They didn't arrest him. They didn't have a case. If he had gone down there, he would have explained. If he would have explained, he would have put himself in the soup. If he would have put himself in the soup, he would have been cooked. But he really has no involvement in the organization. And he's just a board member and signs checks. One early morning, This board member, along with some of the others, were arrested and indicted for grand larceny with potential jail time of five to ten years. That the fact that he signed every check, they believe that all the fraud was done with his knowledge and even more so was directed by him. Like, if, if you do get subpoenaed to be a witness or a non-party witness in a civil case, they want you to appear for a deposition. They have to tell you in the subpoena itself why they are subpoenaing you. If they don't do that, the subpoena is defective. Uh, every person has a right to apply for public benefits. Um, for, in regards to assets, if 
there's an elderly person residing in your household, and when I say elderly, um, 60 or above, I'm almost there, so I don't consider myself elderly, <laughs> but it's the federal government and the state rules, um, then you can have $3,000 um, in assets. If someone is, if anyone in your household, if everyone in your household is under 60, then it's 2,000. You can also own a home. Um, the myth out there is that you cannot own a home and receive ongoing public assistance. You can own a home that you reside in, that you live in um, on, on a day-to-day -day basis. The government do, do place a lien on your home, um, and that lien is lifted once you get off cash, cash assistance, public assistance, or unfortunately, um, you pass away. A nursing home today is about $100,000 a year out of your pocket, and you would have to spend down your assets before you would be eligible for a Medicaid, which would be the part of that. A person who swindled the Jewish community out of tens and tens of millions of dollars, one of his mahalas was is that while he was in the middle of a business deal, he would have a Rosh Hashiva come in and make an impassioned plea for money. He would take out a check for $25,000 and immediately write it on the spot. Now, of course, if you're sitting there and listening to this, a man who writes a check for $25,000, I mean, we're talking about a guy asking someone who's necessarily we should believe. Not necessarily so. It was all timed for the, he had an appointment with the Rosh Hashiva to come in specifically in that moment while he's involved in the business negotiation. This is not an exaggeration. There are people in our community who unfortunately use and abuse B'nai Torah in a way in which they should not be used. The first thing I ask them when they've done something very foolish with a capital V, the first thing I ask them, did you discuss this matter with your wife? That's the first thing I ask him. And invariably, I have yet in 37 years to have someone who walked into my office who was swindled with a fraud, who had told me that he had discussed it with his Robinson. Why? Because we mamin and b'mei mamin and we believe. How do you avoid all that? Very simple. Put your agreement in writing. And you can say, I understand what you're saying to me in this email, but add in the language, but nothing's going to be final until we have a, a full writing, a separate writing that contains everything. Yana, Judge Sweeney, can you, can you tell us some of your experience where people came into your courtroom and said, I was always the true owner. It was just in my friend's name. Somebody purchases a home with your money. The home is in their name. Of course, the promise is he's going to pay you back or he's going to transfer the home back to you at some point in time. And it doesn't go like that. He, he doesn't do what he's supposed to do under the handshake deal. So now let's say the person who owns the home flips the house and sells it to someone else. And that someone else knows nothing of that deal. That person, if certain things are proven, is a good faith purchaser and gets the home. There's nothing you can do about it. The landlord really wants $1,500 a month, so he takes $500 on the side from the tenant. It has now turned into a criminal investigation, and it's not worth it. The parish fin insurance is to indemnify Tzirik geben jene de mensch, Tzirik stellen de mensch, wie es gewähn vor dem Claim. Tom hat man nicht gekauft, die richtige Insurance, in der Policy nicht auf der richtige genommen. There's nobody home. Wann weiß man, wie viel Inventory man gehabt? Es ist auf der Tax Return. A Platz ist ein Inventory. In der Insurance Company kickt, also gehabt 20.000 Dollar Inventory, jetzt ist verbrennt geworden der Platz. I feel the, the adjuster says, it's like a million dollar weight for Schreuder. 20.000 Dollar, that's it. An innocent bystander walked out of the house, what do you think? I had a cop in the house, and the was, he hit me, he, this guy. I said, what's the case? I'm going to come here to the smith, I'm going to get out of the house. So I was going to go back and say, your word against his word, I'm going to go back and say, I'm going to go back and say, I'm going to go back and go to Central Booking. In the next thing we know is that the Royer, the whole organization, came to us. He was a man with the man. He had a personal liability. He had 
a H04, it's my rentes policy, it's a condo policy, a homeowner's policy. Hat der Wesel mal rausnehmen, darf nicht die ganze Stadt wissen, darf man nicht zusammenschnorren. Die Klemme gehen an Millionen Tulle. Hat er reingegeben, ein Bild von 7000 Dollar, der erste Heudisch. In, der Wall ist eine ausgenannte Company, er ist irgendwas anderes angestanden. Und was meint der Company, bekommt ein Bild von 7000 Dollar? Dann haben sie rumgeschickt, einfach 7000 Dollar, schickt mal rum. Keiner hat nicht gewusst, von der Mensch, haben sie die Neid, der ganze Claim. So man hat compromised, ein Million Dollar, für 5000 Dollar. 